Thank you to our sponsor for season two, Punto Space. The contemporary raw space combines capacity with intimacy. Four distinct spaces on three levels encompass more than 3,500 square feet. Custom configurations, a state-of-the-art audio-visual system, and full-service support provide endless possibilities for realizing your creative vision. Welcome to Currency Shift, the podcast where we showcase and share insights from first, only, and the disruptive. These are people who are creating new lanes and carving new paths for women, people of color, and diversity and inclusion. My name is Shade Simone. Let's get started. All right, we have Brandon, James, Todd in the house. Hey, hey we just gonna toast cheers it up. Toast, cheers. Toast. Fiji water cheers. is amazing. Purity, <laughs> mm. clarity. Can we get that beat playing in the background the whole time? Oh, you like the beat? Oh, such a vibe right there. Yes, I love that beat. Shout yeah. out to Taryn Thompson. He actually created the, the music for the podcast. Mm, nice. And so he's on this season as well. Taryn Thompson. I'm gonna check yes, that. yes. All right, so I love the fact that we have not just one, but three dynamic black men on the podcast today that are really, really making an impact in D.C. and in other areas of the industry. If you would, just one of you all, give me a, a brief description on what the company is about and how, what you all do. Man, so the company is called Entrevation, Entrepreneurship Innovation, and the core goal is to help our friends monetize their talents so we kind of started up to be a business incubator accelerator kind of thing and mm-hmm. we met some really key people over over the years and now it's kind of led to us making some some good inroads and in, in disruptive industries so happy here to be here to talk about it thank you for inviting us no problem like i saw a lot of the things that you all were doing as far as like the money trees uh everything you were doing with the counterculture and i really saw like wow they're really being impactful in little ways but the impact is bigger for the long term than anyone right. can imagine so I love the fact that all three of you are here, but let's take like 10 steps back and find out individually, like what were you trying to aspire to when you were younger? And anyone can start. Man, uh, crazy. I guess we'll get into how we all met, right, later on. And I think it'll kind of tie in uh, for me going first. So uh, I always love the sky. I think uh, one of the, the coolest things about life is looking up. Um, we're here in New York with you now, all these great skyscrapers, and I, and I wonder how much people just look up, you know. Uh, we're always looking at the New York skyline, but how much do people in New York look up? So growing up in Faber, North Carolina, I always looked up the street, I looked up the <laughs> road, uh, and sometimes I looked up and I saw men jumping out of the sky because that's the home of the 82nd Airborne, and that's something that I committed to wanting to do to kind of escape my circumstances and make sure we had a better way uh, from Fayetteville than, than uh than what was presented. So that was kind of the start, that vision, realizing that uh, the soldiers uh, had a different uh, view of the world, but also people had a different view of them. Uh, they had resources everywhere you went, going down the street in favor, mm-hmm. easy credit, E1 ranking. Okay, this is yeah. a, a method, a ladder to escape, uh, which is interesting because you've kind of become human currency, human energy to, mm-hmm. to make a movement. So that was kind of where I started in uh, reading encyclopedias, going through reading books, uh, was very, very influential, uh, kind of that edge of the tech millennial age where you can kind of still build your compact presario and, and steal some AOL CDs <laughs> and make sure that you had enough internet to stay up all night and do your homework and, and look at cool cars and Encarta. Uh, those are things that I grew up doing. And so uh, one way uh, or another, uh, sports, athletics, military uh, shaped me into a person that wanted to make sure I stood up for the rights of others. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's kind of law. But uh, in the sense of where law met business, met civil rights, it's not enough to just allow someone to be free if they don't have an opportunity to succeed, don't have opportunity to engage in active business and commerce. And so kind of seeing myself coming from a person that spent white money, you know, at one time, you know, some of my mom, hey, why do we have white money? Uh, looking at people who wore green clothes is cool <laughs> and staring at the sky all the, all the way. I think um, I found a pretty spacey way to come here. I like that. Uh, myself. So uh, when I was a child, um, I had a sort of an atypical childhood. Um, so a majority of my um, my childhood was spent overseas, so about 14 years. Mm-hmm. Um, and this was between 
um, Toronto, um, Puerto Rico, San Juan, uh, all the way to Cambridge in the UK, to um, Botswana, Zimbabwe, Harare, um, a whole list of countries. Um, so I think my perspective on what I wanted to do when I grew up and the impact I wanted to have was, again, atypical. So mine was built more so around family and leadership. Mm -hmm. Um, and so those are still sort of um, some of the motivating factors that um, lead my coursework today with these guys. Um, but, yeah, I'll, I think I'll stop there. For All right. Now. And Brandon spoke first, and that was James talking. James, what was it that allowed you to actually travel so much when you were younger? Sure. So um, my father was a uh, U.S. diplomat. Um, mm -hmm. So he was in the Army um, for about 26 years or so. Um, uh, retired at the rank of lieutenant colonel. Mm -hmm. And so some of his base assignments were um, uh, assisting in defense and intelligence overseas uh, for embassies. So um, that allowed me to see a lot of, excuse me, allowed me to travel a lot of places but see a lot of things at a really early age. So, um, you know, the way I built sort of uh, my own my own fact patterns, what, were, what was interesting to me, um, mm -hmm. what stood out to me in the world um, was sort of at a young age predicated by things that a lot of people would never experience or just saw on TV. Um, so I think my perspective of just one, maybe just the African diaspora here in the United States is yeah. just a little bit different. But also uh, I think, you know, how I see entrepreneurs versus how they see themselves a little bit different as well. So, Got it. Thank you for that. Yeah. Todd? <clears throat> and for me, uh, I grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, mm -hmm. blue collar city. Pops was a police officer. Mom was delivering boxes for Federal Express. So, you know, I kind of didn't see much um, or wasn't exposed to much but music, um, art, and sports. And that's kind of how I grew up. I uh, played baseball, basketball, football, ran track, swam, whatever you want me to do, tennis, soccer. We did it all <laughs> um, just to try it out. We're going to make it out of here. Um, and so from there, you know, I, I took the straight and narrow uh, went to an all-boys Catholic school, which was interesting, being one of 40 black kids in a 1,000-boy, mm -hmm. you know, all-boys Catholic school. And then I decided I wanted to get out and get out and see, you know, what the world was about. And so I got down to Howard University in Washington, D.C. Hate you. Uh, studied <laughs> engineering. And then, um, you know, it, it took me to another level of, of thinking. So it's pretty good. I'll stop right there. All right. I appreciate that. Like the interesting thing that I found when I was doing like research on the three of you all is that each one of you have like a connection with the army or the military or some degree. Um, talk to me about how that kind of like shaped you a little bit on your journey and how it's taking you to this point where you are now. Uh, wow. I mean, it's for me, it's, it's an opportunity to realize that there are classes of people. I think as minorities, sometimes we don't have the opportunity to look up, down, left or right and, and see a, a place to go. And so looking at the military as a training ground, as a proven ground and, and an escape was one measure for me. But I don't want to get it twisted because a lot of folks that I went to school with, took their military entrance test in ninth grade in the cafeteria mm -hmm. and they were laughing and joking and they based their whole career like, hey, I'm good. I'm going to the Army. I'm going to Air Force. That's it. And it kind of quit out then. But to me, I kind of saw the principles that they were teaching like, hey, if you continue to strive further, then you can obtain this rank. Then you will uh, somehow magically, I thought, you know, I guess as a <laughs> kid growing up in Fayetteville, North Carolina, where the yeah. middle of your city is a slave market house, thought that that would produce equality, that uh, that would produce acceptance. Mm -hmm. um, and so that that's a reality. Uh, but I also realized it was a price to pay for that acceptance, for that equality, because of the lives and the risk that you had to do physically and the discipline that it would kind of take to excel. So that, that did become something that I saw as an escape. And, and I felt like anybody who... Um, looks at military structures or paramilitary structures uh, and realizes that there's a measure of success when you have to do a lot of tasks. Uh, it comes with, you know, foregoing sleep, being tired, family, mm -hmm. friends, things like that. So at 17 years old, I started getting that training in addition to what was already there from sports and stuff like that. I like that. So at what point, because uh, 
your journeys, you guys were on like three totally different paths from one mm-hmm. another. Yeah. Yeah. Three, three totally. You were traveling, you were like engineering, and yeah. you have your PhD now, right? Or it's you still? There. It's almost there. Yeah. You were getting your law degree, right. and now you're getting your MBA. Like, right. how did you guys actually like meet? Uh, an amazing being. Uh, I think energy is real. Uh, so yeah. I would really like to tell a cool story about yeah. uh, I was walking down the street one day. <laughs> and so when I was walking down the street, uh, I heard a little scream and said, hey! And I just stuck my arms out. And I caught Todd. Like, yeah. Todd was literally falling from the sky. I caught him. I was like, falling. okay, cool. <laughs> and we're going we're gonna to go along. And then the same guy, his name is Isaiah Gardner, amazing guy, yeah. played cornerback for Jacksonville. Uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars, one of mm-hmm. our uh, fraternity brothers. Uh, he does big sales for fire agencies and fire equipment down in uh, Austin, Texas now. Shout out Vitalik. Shout out to his new son. And then right. so he uh, introduced me fun. to James, and you know James was walking down the street, and he, he caught, caught me too. coming out. No, he <laughs> caught me. You know, he like, put his arms like, hey, and James was like, hey, man, let's hang out. We we have some similar vibrations. And that one individual was actually moving out of town, going to Texas from okay. DC, and was able to kind of help synergize some relationships that. Uh, we needed to have clearly. Yeah, yeah. he wanted so, to connect his best friends. So the way I see this story is, um, uh, I feel like we come from. Um, I'm sure you probably tap into this wavelength or frequency sometimes as well. Um, that we're really determined and focused on growth, um, on learning, on um, being able to provide accurate information. Um, and so the reason why I picked up on why it's frequency is because unfortunately one of my best friends at the time was leaving as he stated. Um, and, uh, the night before very randomly, um, I had happened to be researching, I want to say the secondary mortgage market. And, um, you were just casually researching that. Uh, it's one of those things where it was like one of those Google rabbit holes where it was like oh, I was okay. researching something and I was like. What's this? And then he was casually researching. <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 that's a right. <laughs> and there's a business model behind it. Yeah, right. I'm sorry, James. Right. So, um, in any event, um, so I went to my friend's going away party, super sad. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I ended up having a drink and having this conversation with someone about the secondary mortgage market. Who knew? <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, and then uh, out of that, I caught this amazing best friend of mine slash brother. Um, that uh, I, I haven't been able to shake since, and I wouldn't if uh, if I had a choice. So he's not fast enough. Uh, I am. <laughs> he's long. I'm fast enough. I don't think I can. Escape. I'm definitely fast enough. I don't think I can. Escape. <laughs> and uh, Ty and I are fraternity brothers too. And um, what fraternity is that? Omega, Omega Psi Phi. That's why I asked if I could bark earlier, but I'm not. <laughs> I don't think we're supposed to bark earlier. Right, right, I right, think that's right. not in the it's rules. Hurt <laughs> yeah, hurt <laughs> but um, we have a dog in here. We have Graves in here for the podcast. So yeah. cool. we feel we feel well well represented. All right. right. But yeah, so um, fraternally, you know, we're in Omega Psi Phi, and uh, I met Brandon six years ago now, maybe, mm-hmm. and um, and I met Isaiah, the guy that inter- introduced us all, really. Um, and from that, that experience, um, we've grown up and, and bonded and I realized he was in law and he was also, um, an advocate of, of cannabis. And so mm-hmm. I asked him to support me in a, in a mission, um, that I had to, um, help a, a student that got kicked out of Howard for having less than an ounce of cannabis in his room, which is now legal, totally mm. legal in DC. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, uh, this kid wanted to put on a music festival, mm-hmm. um, he said, I want Snoop Dogg and Wiz Khalifa. And I was like, all right, we're going to do this. <laughs> straight out of sco- straight out of college, straight out, kicked out of laying on my couch, right? Mm-hmm. Eventually, um, two years later, we, we did that. We had a Snoop music Dogg festival. and Wiz Khalifa. In fact, we got to break Snoop Dogg's Made in America tour contract mm-hmm. by giving him a new name as uh, DJ Snoop Adelic. Snoop Adelic. Oh, right. wow. Right. Taylor okay. Gang and DJ Snoop Adelic. So, so we had Snoop right. DJ for Wiz. So yeah. Snoop didn't perform. He was DJing. Or yeah. Wiz. And so we were able to make some cool things happen. It's kind of like our disruption. We needed them and we needed their voices. Right. Uh, we booked up the, the number one concert venue, uh, Echo mm-hmm. Stage, mm-hmm. Uh, on the East Coast. And we were able to pack that out. And everybody there was giving away cannabis, enterprising with what the, the market of cannabis is and right. the sub products. We were able to put a, a lot of people in the room and spark off some energy. Uh, and Wiz and Snoop helped us with that. We really appreciate it. And after that, some other folks took over that realm and, and mm-hmm. started the National Cannabis Music Festival, which still goes on to this day, I mm-hmm. think, you know, and it's a beautiful thing. 
That's amazing. So you all kind of like planted the roots. Yeah. Well, I mean, we, we I think D.C. is an interesting soil. You know, I would say we're a part of an interesting ecosystem. So whether we were the water or, or the seed or the roots or the sun, mm-hmm. energy at one different point at a time. But we definitely touched it all. Mm-hmm. I like that play off the analogy. Mm, very mm. good. <laughs> all right. So so you guys meet. That's probably like the the big thing that you guys start to do is to do the festival. And then you all start doing more grassroots kind of like events like with the fundraising and everything else so what if what was the tipping point that allowed you guys to say hmm we're three friends three totally different personalities but our energies are kind of like on the same wavelength we have the same focus let's start a business like what was the tipping point that allowed you guys to do that uh can i say i don't really think it was a tipping point okay um i think all of i think all (laughs) of us were in business and in some form or fashion. Mm -hmm. And it was like, um, I think all of us, for the most part, wanted to sort of assist each other. We were interested and sort of passionate about aiding each other and whatever we were doing. Mm -hmm. And so because one of my friends is a lawyer, um, it, that conversation doesn't go very far. <laughs> <laughs> right, that part. Right, I forget so. that too. I'm like, you're talking to me. Like, right, right. You know, yeah. I forget sometimes, but um, it's it's definitely needed all the time. So, yes. And why this path? Like, why did you all decide to be strong advocates? I know you said the story about your right. friend at, at Howard, but what was it that painted the bigger? picture where you were like all right we want to monetize help yeah. people monetize yeah. their talents right. but then we also want to affect change in the cannabis industry so i mean it was literally you know a, a passion story about me helping someone who lost his mother lost his educational opportunities mm-hmm. and um trying to help him figure out what to do next in life and in that time i got educated on the the, the benefits of cannabis mm. um I was, like I said, my dad was a police officer, so cannabis was like a no-go right? <laughs> in, the, in the house. And I was just like, people that did it was like, eh, I don't know if I should hang out with those kind of folks, right? Yeah. Um, but he exposed me to um, uh, Israel and all of the different uh, research that has been done. And he said, man, this could have saved my mom's life. And I'm like, what? Mm. He's like, yeah, look at this. And I'm like, wow. And she had cancer. She had a rare um, liver disease that was sprung about from chemotherapy. Oh, that yeah. cannabis could have could have healed up. So that led us into doing the festival and meeting a ton of other passionate advocates. A ton, not just of advocates though. Not even advocates, business people. Business people, people. and they were politicians. They, yeah, they were all over. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It yeah. wasn't just them. Yeah. And what and they, year was this? Wow, we're talking about 2015. Yeah, 2014, okay. 15. Yeah. So that that collision course and that that progression um was slow. You know, it right. was so it was Years. small events. It was rent out your local this before you get to the large conference suites in the convention center where, you know, Leafly is sponsoring you and We Maps is your prime sponsor or mm-hmm. you're throwing a concert with Snoop and Wiz. Mm-hmm. Um and in that progression, what I saw was danger. What I saw was a lot of youth willing to recommit themselves to a life of crime in a different fashion in effort to rebel against a system that was contemplating moving forward in the industry without them, mm-hmm. um, using their life capacity and energy and lost earnings. I, we've done events with Drug Policy Alliance. We have letters and sponsorship mm-hmm. by them, too. Uh, almost 2.5 to 3.5 million people estimated were lost or lost livelihoods in the drug war. That's a whole country. Right. Like I say yeah. these things, and, and it's interesting for me as a soldier to say, well, while I'm overseas, you know, doing a war, uh, in reality for land, property, safety, terrorism, all the things that are attached to it, you know, my friends uh, at home are being locked up, losing educational opportunities. The mm-hmm. friends that I'm with are being damaged to a point that uh, mentally, physically, when they come home, they'll need a medication that's not going to damage their system more. And if they use it, they lose their VA benefits or they go to jail. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at my peers. Uh, who are committing themselves to, I'm going to sell this, I'm going to figure it out, we're going to give a sticker, we're gonna do it, whatever <laughs> and, we have to do. And in D.C., it was yeah. it crazy. Was, um, it, you can gift cannabis, right? We can okay. grow your there's own a, cannabis. There's a gray market, right? Mm-hmm. You can grow your own, you can mm-hmm. gift it to whoever you want, as long as you don't sell it. But mm-hmm. you no still can get in trouble. So that was the focus. Big trouble. 
so we fine. got in trouble first for people to find out. Right. Um, yeah. We threw events at, at our house, at our offices, brought people in, mm-hmm. brought all the advocacy organizations. Police shut it down. Police shut it down. <laughs> um, notices from commissioner, hundreds right. of people, you know, outside exercising their right to Medicaid and mm-hmm. grow and bring seeds and sharing seeds and thousands of clone shares and yeah. 51 foot. It lands you, know, you on the front page joints. of the Washington Post. It'll you know? put you on the front page of the Washington Post. Yeah. A couple of times. A couple of times. So. For different ways. And and like I said, that danger part, then combined with the visibility that, that James talks about with different business models and combined with Todd's process and project management with my risk management factor, you know, if someone else has so much offense, Sometimes they just need a team. Sometimes they need a team that can play defense against them and play offense with them. Right. And yeah, so like we that. realized how we could start playing, you know, with other companies mm-hmm. to accelerate them, to supercharge them. And so it didn't just become your cannabis idea. It was like, hey, you're really intelligent. And the only reason you want to be an entrepreneur is because you heard it was a $22 billion industry coming mm-hmm. about, or you've seen that minorities were locked out. But you should just be a regular entrepreneur because right. that's your passion. Yeah. And it helped spark people forward and helped spark thought into industry. And we found that that needed to be monetized. And that's right. something, you know, I guess we'll get mm-hmm. into with the influencer side and mm-hmm. how we change laws, because that's yeah. eventually what it came to be when we did certain events, spoke at certain places. Laws changed. Literally. The ideas just came out different. Mm-hmm. So, uh, again, any 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 issue any of us would have, we would obviously bounce you know tap gloves with each other try and bounce balls off the wall see what we could you know see what we could bring out of that and um essentially i think just the diverse mix of not only you know skills and disciplines between us um but just sort of who we are as friends i think differentiates Mm -hmm. sort of the type of advice we would give Mm -hmm. yeah um and i think that gives us uh, an interesting balance as far as the ideas that end up coming out of sort of the collective yeah and that friendship part like clients love to see the culture that we bring to different different organizations right like we'll end up wearing the same same shoes (laughs) one day but they'd be highlighter highlighter green you know yeah um and we bring them into the 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 fold as as a part of the family so it's a really interesting dynamic when we sit down and conduct ideations the human experience um is is learned and i feel is is adhesed on different levels there's visual learners there's there's left brain there's right brain people Mm -hmm. and so i think it's interesting when you talk about learning and teaching someone um how many ways that cultures can sort of be adhesed. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's it's interesting for a business owner to be put into a situation where there's really no wrong answer. There's only the best answer. Yeah. And so um, when you're able to be sort of taken out of a mindset or an office experience where um, repetitiveness has sort of lulled your creativity to sleep, um, and or, defines your measure of success. That again, and defines your measure of success. Mm-hmm. And so, even even in this conversation, we may build on different um, aspects or uh, perceptions of ideas, mm-hmm. and that would only be possible by having you know a, a, a loony creative in the room who thinks outside the box, um, a, a very uh, a very um, astute lawyer with a high amount of discernment for boundaries. Right. Mm -hmm. Actual boundaries. And then obviously, um, you know, Todd also shows us, Okay, well, if I see a point that no one's been to um, and Brandon is able to draw it out and say, "Okay, this is somewhere that we can go to legally. um, (laughs) You know, we also (laughs) need (laughs) we 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 need we need a fire starter. We need that energy. Um, and, And Todd provides that sort of conduction of that idea to a point that actually ends up here and working and Snoop yeah. Dogg. <laughs> we, we call it the Bono Six Hats. It's a, it's Say a, that again for me. The, the Bono, Bono Six, Six Hats. Hats. It's okay. basically a, a problem solving methodology, but it's using different perspectives mm-hmm. or perceptions of concepts and business ideas. Mm-hmm. And so if you think about a, a creative, uh, optimistic, pessimistic individual. Why well, always got to be bad? <laughs> you're a lawyer. Um, <laughs> but... <laughs> But ultimately, when you, when you look at any kind of business model, you evaluate it from multiple angles. And at the end of the day, like James said, it's not always um, multiple answers. It's the right answer. It is the answer. And we kind of feel like we always come up with that when we're working with our clients. So 
Yeah, and, and, and sorry to cut you, in if, but minority clients don't get that level of intelligence often in their consulting services, in their business model formation, mm -hmm. in their ability to have deferred gratification, realizing that setting up your processes bring you happiness later. And as an attorney, as a, a business mind, as an entrepreneur myself, I felt and my mom and my, my family taught me that if you're going to give someone a service, mm -hmm. it better be a gold standard because minorities don't receive that kind of work. They don't receive, you know, a million dollars worth of education and training mm -hmm. at one yeah. time. And not only just in mine, and Todd has the same and then James has the same. And you have the same too, you know, Brittany, you're educated. That's and four you, million. I mean, right there. <laughs> now, now that's the value of a human life. You know, I've got to work with some great civil rights cases, uh, working with attorneys at, at, at like Billy Murphy, Judge Murphy down mm -hmm. in Baltimore. We talk about value in the life of Freddie Gray. You know, yeah. how much is a black life worth? Well, how much is it worth during your time to give other minorities excellent quality service that allows them to understand business philosophy, philosophy, legal business philosophy, creative business theory, and engagement? Like, I love the fact that all of you all, you just kind of, like, bounce it off of each other, like, mm -hmm. your ideas, and even the way you structure the conversation between the two, you, you can tell that you guys have been friends for a while or have been working together for a while. Talk to me a little bit about when times get tough, like, how do you all deal with that? Because you're in an industry where... Yeah. <laughs> all day, all. What do you mean? Y'all fight, like, on yeah. video games, or y'all have, like, a fight club that y'all go to, yeah, and y'all just the, it's get called it out. Green. Just go straight James just green. tried to beat up the microphone. <laughs> he was like, this is what happened. I was like, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was like, did you I want mean, a demonstration? That just <laughs> we have we have very interesting um, discussions. I mean, we we talk it out and um, we figure out what the best path forward is. It might take all night, it might take three days, but at the end of the day, um, we talk it out because these guys are super intelligent, and it's great to just be a fly on the wall when they go at it. So I love it. Let's talk <laughs> about the four agreements real quick. I want to go into theory and then James because James is James's approach. And James is balanced. Todd is throwing off right now. So if you see, we have, you know, all our, we wear different things. Like, so amethyst yes. down. So it connects a lot, right? Mm -hmm. So four agreements. One, don't take anything personal. Mm -hmm. Like, why? If something can happen right now. You go outside, get hit by a car, run a by a bus. Mm -hmm. That's that bus driver's bad day. Like, that's not nothing that, that, that you can change right. innately in your life. You have to set prepare for, but also in conversations to respect that viewpoint, you know, mm -hmm. um, being impeccable with your word. You know, James knows if, if him and I get in a dispute, it's usually over the creative liberal interpretation of where a word can go. Mm, and okay. to narrow it down between two business partners that are on two technical ends of the spectrum and say, I'm disagreeing with you because your word definition is not clear, is being impeccable with your word. That's not going against what my known definition of the word is or his is coming to a new agreement. Um, always doing your best and not making assumptions. Like One of the things that Todd does often is maybe uh, put projects in line that remove assumptions because we assess them we actually identify what is the problem what are you assuming here mm -hmm. most of the time you yeah. know we're assuming wrong things or our assumptions as he'll right. say in a technical sense are wrong so i get that from a legal business theory side mm -hmm. and then i'm going to throw it to james because that's that's a whole other side and then maybe and then you'll see how we flow that way mm -hmm. okay got it um again i think um i think it's a long process just to speak as accurately and honestly as I can. Um, I think with any relationship that that takes uh, an immense amount of uh, devotion, uh, commitment. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's pretty clear that we're committed to each other um, for life. So I think that's a good foundation that started mm -hmm. um, the ability to have that communication um, is that uh, we sort of have a militant sort of um commitment but also culture within our company mm -hmm. um, that if we're speaking on something it's because not only because we're passionate about it but it's because we know the right thing to do and if we mm -hmm. don't we're probably not gonna take a hard line right, right. Mm -hmm. and so again we we're not perfect right so I'm not claiming to be but I think that you know for some people <clears throat> hopping over that 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 barrier hopping over that hurdle is very difficult for a lot of people. And so I think we're sort of fortunate and blessed to be, to have been able to do that as friends first mm -hmm. and then been able to test that through business, which is something that a lot of friends don't 
yeah. to get to do. You know, nah. a lot of people say stay away from friends and business. Yeah. And, um, I think that maybe shows a, maybe another level of friendship that we are able to sort of deal with both of those facets of life. Because well, you guys kind of did the trust fall when you guys met. Like you caught Todd. Right. You right. Caught, there you, you go. Know, there you go. Right. So your foundation of your friendship was already on trust. And then you all yeah. were able to build on top of that. Right. And so a lot of relationships, um, when people jump into business, they mm-hmm. don't really have that foundation or that those four agreements right. and that commitment to one another. It's a commitment to, the actual idea or the revenue goal or something like that. But what you're doing is really smart is Mm -hmm. that you have a commitment to one another first. Well, well, I mean, that business model you said is three different things like commitment to a revenue goal. That's consideration. And Mm -hmm. we do have a contract and we do have written document agreements on how we're supposed to act. But that wasn't the first thing that you had, right? It wasn't. It wasn't wasn't for years. years. Maybe two years we didn't have any agreements between us and... We trusted each other that at that much. Yeah. And it, it worked out very well. But it grew and, to a point where you needed it. Oh, it was 100%. like if yeah. we're gonna 100%. if we're gonna be coaching people and telling people what to do with their businesses, exactly and saying yeah. agreements, offer acceptance and consideration are important, we should have it between right. ourselves. Yeah. So but I, but I think that's also an important part, um, again, just to reiterate that, as to why it probably worked the way it did. Mm-hmm. And I feel like a lot of entrepreneurs um, sometimes, again, are so left-brained, they're just, they want to get to the next step. They want to get to the next step. Right. And one thing definitely over the past two to three years for me, um, HR and your culture, um, the sort of buy-in that you have from your employees, the sort of buy-in that you have from your founders, right. sometimes does make or break the business model. Because, Thank you. People don't get that. Right. <laughs> not at all. We're not robots. Right. Right. <laughs> I, I used that to say, hey, man, it's the human side of things. You right. understand right. these people are human. <laughs> so speaking of the human side, like you all have your full-time jobs that you do. But then you also have this company. And then on top of that, you have everything that you're doing in the communities. How do you balance your mental health? And how do you take care mm-hmm. of yourself outside of one another? That's deep. So I just got done doing Ramadan. That was a really interesting uh. um, experience. I'm not Muslim, but I have I do have a friend who um, is Muslim and challenged me to take that on. And I did not eat for, let's say, 14, 15 hours a day. It was very interesting. He's like, look, you got to meditate. You got to connect with yourself. Um, so, you know, over that time, it was like a really interesting uh, experience. I was like, you know, that's called fasting, right? It's called fasting. I don't know what it is. Like, a lot of religions do that, though. I know, but I've never done it. I, <laughs> I mean, that's the thing about I've religion. I've never done it. We, we, we connect so much of religion and spirituality together. You know, we have religious business processes that makes our business spiritual. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like, right. if that's you want to be heart honest, heart really. you know what I mean? Like, and and right. it coming together, we have religious sure. practices about how we treat each other, right. um, mm-hmm. about the foundation of how we treat our clients. You know, we just checked on our clients on the Saturday health and wellness calls, and, and this mm-hmm. is honest. We were calling almost 50 and to 60 people. And one tour people. of ro- ro- Rotator Cup today. Right. Didn't oh, know. Wow. Runs a, yeah. runs a $125 million right. a government contract company. Mm-hmm. Just had to move. Kids graduated, and kid tore his Rotator Cup right. in the state championship surgery. football yeah, just game. Had just had surgery. And then now the father and CEO of the company tears his Rotator Cup. Hey, if we don't check in on a Saturday on your mm-hmm. client, and make sure that they're good. Your culture's wrong. Your the religious practice of your culture. Check on your people. Right. Nice. But for yourselves, what do you well, do? That, that's that's the that, same. that gives us that 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 feel that that spiritual, you know, flow. Um, mm-hmm. Making sure that people in your circle are all on the same wave. Okay. It kind of circles back to the um, to the comment you made earlier about the money tree video that I think you saw. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, so for us, I think it is important for not only that we have that. Um, understanding with our clients that we're here not only just in a business capacity, but your business sometimes supports your lifestyle, your mental health. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think one paying homage, but also just showing that you notice sometimes does help facilitate better quality of your business relationships. And um, I think if you're not paying that amount of attention to your clients or your employees, um, that there's a large area of opportunity for you to get feedback, for you to sort of iterate yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think the fact that we do that, obviously in a, in a scheduled basis and a graduated basis, we take in this data to be able to provide those sort of insights for ourselves. Mm-hmm. But I think the fact that we're 
we look for this data, that we're craving this data is an important part of it as well, if that makes sense. And ways to repeat that process. Like, mm -hmm. Todd's a project management professional. Uh, he's also a project man management professional professor yeah uh, excuse me that's hard to roll off my tongue getting uh done. getting it done and so uh when we look at the things that are innate to us is being able to repeat processes um when we look at saying okay this is the best practice and even though it may be a difficult practice to check on all your clients the best possible mm -hmm. at this interval how can we schedule that how can we counter that how can we incorporate that to our employees our team that this is why this is important how can that help a client re-monetize how can that give a client energy on a Saturday to make sure that people care and their family, they're a CEO or a VP and they can enjoy time with their family because they know their employees are vested. And then when they get to work Monday morning, things are on and popping. Right. You know, and we do have project management software and mm -hmm. systems and things that we incorporate. And uh, the human center design around how we run our business protects our mental health. Right. And so if you have the proper agreements, if you have the proper technical founders, if you have the proper culture, if you have the proper purpose, right, then you should be able to design religious business practices that allow you to have a certain business spirituality, which is going to experience ups and downs, but yes. who doesn't? And, and the proper calendars, okay? The proper calendars. Thank you, Explain Clarissa. It. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Explain that. What do you um, mean? So, so just reminders. I mean, there's so much sustainability, so much information, so many things flying left and right, and you're making mm -hmm. promises. You're saying you're going to do things, or, and you better you know, do you it. You want to hold people and yourself accountable, right? And so, showing up on your ca client's calendar is amazing when it's their task they have to get done and get back to you. So, um, and, I, and I shouted out Clarissa because we have a we have a system that I hit her with something and it bang, it's on their calendar, bang, it's on my calendar, and. It's, it's working out very well. And she's culture. You know, she was an intern. She's right. a project mm -hmm. manager professional. She wanted to engage with the different businesses that were coming inside the D.C. cannabis culture. Mm -hmm. But she didn't ever want to run a dispensary. So it was like, hey, well, how can I work with you all? How can I intern with you all? You guys are doing great things in the community. Mm -hmm. yeah. We opened that door. And she's, you know, one of our top interns that we've had a lot. And we've had a lot of people we work with that have gone on to start businesses on their own and be successful through our coaching and mentorship because we're coached and mentored by individuals who own companies that have really high net values and they teach us, trust us, and we pass that down because that's what you should be able to do. But that's the access part. When you provide gold standard work, then you get gold standard quality uh, clients, but you also get gold standard quality mentors and partner, strategic partner companies, right. which is a different word than a client. Yeah. So it sounds like you all already have it built into the business. And then with your mental health, you're balancing that mm -hmm. by having those structured conversations, those reminders, and looking at it, the the business side of things, right? right? Yeah, right. I would call it foresight, maybe. Okay. Um, and, and striving to see around the corner. And that's what we're, we do. And uh, I mean... You, you ain't got to get ready if you stay ready. Right? <laughs> right. so, to, to circle back as well. Um, so some of the things that I do to keep myself balanced as well is I do, mm -hmm. I meditate a lot. Um, and I feel like that's something that I, that I do to center myself and to um, balance um, the work and um, uh, the need for, for, for personal release and refreshment. Personal Sometimes. refreshment is right. a big emotional thing. emotional refreshment. refreshment. Right. ER. Like emotional refreshment. I smoke weed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, y'all wanted to hear me say it just like that. I like was like was the minority for. way. I consume <laughs> cannabis. I, we've done well in using the word cannabis and not marijuana, which is racist. But when we right. talk about, you know, even in front of my house, it's a sign that says uh, all the rest from weed, weed to seed. To seed. Mm. Weed to seed. It mm. says it in front of my, my very uh, uh, own brownstone down there in the city. But, uh, you know, we consume cannabis, you know, Todd does not. I do, um, I do not. So Duck Duck Goose uh, with us. We tell you it's always <laughs> an interesting balance. Yes. So, yeah. So that's one of the things I, I guess that should be said. Work out. We, we try work to out, work out. And I, yeah. I hang out with the family. And make yeah. money. Every time I Win. can. Win. Every time I, every time I can. Win. Every okay. time I can. Win for your family. Yeah. Win with your, your personal goals. Win for your clients, and and if you take losses, you got to count your wins. You got to be able to see them, mm -hmm. you know, consistently. That's how project management works. Right. One yeah. thing um, I also want to point out is that all of us uh, did some sort of pro bono work um, mm -hmm. before we met each other, and we still continue to do that day in some capacity. Yeah, I was wondering when I stopped doing that. Right. <laughs> it was like we did it. Right. Right. We did okay. it. Right. We're still. So you guys it. still do that? Yeah. yeah. You got to do that. So that's yeah. that's life, right? That's recharging as well. That's yeah. definitely emotionally refreshing.
Okay, I like that. So one of the things that um, I focus on with Currency Shift is social currency. So social currency is building social networks to gain access, influence, resources, and networking in the digital space that affects a person online and offline. So with you all, like collectively, you have over 3,000 followers on um, LinkedIn, like people who follow your posts. You have over 8,000 uh, followers on your IG. Talk to us about in what way social media has influenced or empowered you individually or with your business. Uh, the first way I think is I'll say social media platforms give us a lane to be ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, and I think uh, as uh, as professionals, we're dynamic. And um, I think as people, we're very creative as well. And I think the different social platforms allow us to show both of those in a way that allow our audience to connect with us in a specific way. Um, I think they allow us to tell our stories in a mm -hmm. way that are not only entertaining to our audience, but also entertaining to us as well. <laughs> um, and I think as far as for, you know, on, on a left branded side, I think the the blessing of social media um, as being a, a conduit um, and a way to um, brand yourself to multiple audiences, but not only brand yourself to multiple audiences, but be able to target and sort of test your business to multiple audiences um, is a blessing, I think. And right. again, yeah. with um, the the added features that we have of Google Analytics, the mm -hmm. added features of influencers, uh, mm -hmm. being able to test different products, but also test how our delivery of products may be received um, mm -hmm. is just an interesting, I think, benefit to all entrepreneurs. And I think yeah, I think all people should use social media for you know access to the the people that they want to get their product out to. Mm -hmm. um, but for us, we don't necessarily use it as a medium for advertising and marketing. It's really just showing our authentic self, who we are, right. and how we like to have fun, and how we like to have fun in business. Right. Mm -hmm. All of our clients have definitely come off of word of mouth. Um, not, I mean, people have reached out, but I think mm -hmm. the better ones are the ones that are uh, are already searching for for us and they talk to somebody and hear, man, I had a great time with these guys. I really enjoyed it. Right. Yeah. Um, and we've even, you know, saying, saying that we're not using our best practices on our own company is interesting, but we actually really push hard on our clients to leverage right. the, the power, their, their power. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. that, that's a, that's an interesting thing. When you said it, it's almost like when those, we call it our, our ego, we have to check our yeah. ego. We'll talk about yeah. one of our, our good things. I'm going to try to have a coin. coin. Um, maybe he'll make a whole lot of noise and pull out our coin, but uh, we call it the key to everything, you know, and when we really, <laughs> yeah, when we really look at, I guess what was going to happen is kind of like, Oh, well we don't have enough followers. Right. And yeah. you hear people say, Oh, you got this much and you got this much. It's kind of like, you know, well, is that enough? Mm. Well, the quality of your content, you know, we develop full length videos, full length movies and, mm -hmm. and and explainers and things that will never, ever hit social media. Right. But you develop it in conjunction with the fact that it could be presented. But it's for that one client. It's for that one deal. It's for that one close. Yeah. And so both sides of that coin kind of represent and you're kind of holding the ego coin. Yeah. One side is your big ego. Your big ego is a side that thinks that for the world. This is what I'm the best at. So if we're the best, if we want to be the company that had the most social media followers, we'd be a friend like, hey, well, we, we actually have a hundred, a thousand on this company. We actually have almost uh, 4.5 million, you know, followers of influence, but we don't brag. James you know, that could have definitely that. said that. Would, he could have. <laughs> that, that would have been his big ego. Right. Yeah. Now, if we talk about his little ego, the little ego is the part that's like, well, maybe I'm not smart enough. Maybe we don't have enough. Maybe this is a trait I'm trying to hide from someone that, no, we really have all these followers on social media, but we hope that you see our humility by not bragging about the connectivity and how our business operates to, to brand other companies right. and mm -hmm. to make them successful versus our authentic self and what we show on our social media so that those select people that do follow and engage kind yeah. of know, hey, this is who we are. And yeah, we work with almost $500 million in business every week, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's hard for me to say out loud and not feel like, you know, RIP Nipsey Hustle, you know, doing <laughs> it for our community. It's not that yeah. we have $500 million in the bank. It's that for trust. 
uh, good faith credit equity execution uh, execution how much you gross how much you gross (laughs) you know how much the numbers are coming through the door for the teams and the talent that you're working with you start throwing the real numbers out you can't be scared because you got to treat that like five dollars and that's the ego coin you know which side are you on right now your big one or your little one so that's the key to everything shout out to rashad rashad howard Um, Mm -hmm. rashadhoward.com shout out to fred Shout out to Fred Dees. Shout out to Fred Dees. Yeah, yeah. The KNC is the Knowledge Network and Capital. Shout okay. out to Fred. I, I love to learn things from our clients, too. Yes. Uh, they have some interesting... Social capital um, is, again, um, a super relevant topic today yeah. um, for businesses, but also personal brands. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think um, if you're not knowledgeable about it that uh, I hope this is the I hope I'm the first person to tell you that you're missing out on a, a huge opportunity one to gather data about yourself and how you can monetize yourself but two depending on how you conduct your business there's uh, multiple ways which you can social excuse me there's multiple ways that you can leverage social media to not only provide social proof but also to provide connectivity to uh, I'm a multiplicity of, net, of of social networks of private networks um, if you're able to enact the right strategy um, on yeah, your page. Yeah. To get them on and to get them off. Right. We call that our three Ps. Are we right. actually doing a concert right now? Right. <laughs> I mean, we can. Three Ps. I mean, you know, product, promotion, point of purchase. Right. Yeah. You know, is that a function of social capital? Is social currency? Is that a, a new wave of, t- wave of technology? Or is it being made more actionable so that you can interact with the human-centered design of impulse purchasing, impulse liking, uh, this overload of our most complex machine of the human brain, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, being uh, far stretched to the outer reaches of where our chemical connectivity can come in. And that's where the cannabis comes in, you know. Mm-hmm. We talk about chemical connectivity for your brain. You talk about post-war recovery for myself, drug war recovery, criminalization recovery, looking outside your neighborhood and seeing it blighted, mm-hmm. having four kids and, and, and making sure that the lights stay on. You know, people who consume yeah. cannabis, seeing a market open up for $22 billion, like, where did this money come yeah. from? <laughs> right. You you know, like, right. okay, great. But did you know that there is, you know, every month these certain certified business entities or minority business entities that get contracting money that can help mm-hmm. jumpstart and bootstrap your business if you have the right discipline and process, if you engage people who care not just about your social currency and how many followers you have, mm-hmm. but how that affects your bottom line and your efficiency of business. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I, I tell people, like... My essentially the podcast is a proof of concept when it comes to social currency. Like Mm -hmm. all of my guests, I've slid in their DMs. Mm -hmm. I've messaged them on LinkedIn or I've contacted somebody in my network Mm -hmm. to refer somebody else that would be a good fit. So when I'm when we're talking about your social currency, for me, it's important for people to understand the power of your relationships Mm -hmm. and the relationships that you build on these social mediums Mm -hmm. and how you take those relationships to the next level that will affect you in your career or in your personal life. Like you guys probably have had like some leads come from your LinkedIn or your Instagram, Mm -hmm. but they've also talked to somebody about you all, Mm -hmm. but trust, but verified from your social media. Right. right? Uh, so like, I love where this conversation is going. I love like the fact that you guys are just a good vibe in here, but tell me, Fiji water. I know. Pop Fiji. Bottle, right? <laughs> natural, <laughs> natural, <laughs> or hits his sand. Wow. <laughs> he from, he from North Carolina. I'm from the States. But what piece of advice would you put on the post-it note? Just one piece of advice of everything from your childhood to what you've experienced now from all of your pedigree, like what would be one piece of advice that you would put on a post-it note on your desk? On my desk to me or to someone else? Somebody else. For you. Uh, Well, I mean, I actually have that, so that's easy. (laughs) Actually, I'll let them go first because mine's simple. Okay. Todd? Um, Live courageously. Mm -hmm. Um, I think there is a lot of opportunity for me at a young age to do different things, Mm -hmm. Um, but I decided to stay the straight and narrow. But it did lead me to these two gentlemen, so I'm kind of happy that I did. But live courageously and, and get outside of the box early as possible um, and, and take advantage of all the uh, – and leverage all the opportunities that are provided to you. All right. I like that. Um, mine is kind of cool. Demonstrate refinement in everything that you do. Mm. Um, I think it speaks for itself. Ups, downs, uh, whatever the process is, whatever this this ride of life, you know, spiritually, emotionally, physically, uh, uh 
financially that we're going to take. We're all supposed to continue to refine. So, you know, just like that crude oil, just like that cotton, the cotton gin, just like right. anything that tills or comes from the ground to be a final product, you have to refine. So regardless of the circumstance, the, the post-it that's actually up for me is demonstrate refinement in everything that you do. Yeah. He, 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 even in golf, he was like, look, man, you got to swing the same way every time. You got to refine your skills. Every time you come back, you swing the same way. I'm like. And he just <laughs> makes small adjustments. You're right. Make small adjustments. Right? Yeah. Okay. Small adjustments. Thanks. Um, hmm. On a post-it. Okay, so I would normally draw stuff. So, and these guys know that. Um, two but, letters, <laughs> one plus one. Right, like I would have two circles or something, and I would I would make a pictogram or an infographic. I wouldn't write a note. <laughs> and they know this. That's the Facts. Creative. So Facts. Wow. You should That's see his cool. notebook. Facts. I'm like, how yeah, so I that? think if I was going to put something on a on a on a on a sticky note, it would yeah. have something to do with you know fear being a com- a compass um, to your destiny, and then the other thing would say just do it, um, learn, then ask a mentor. That's it. I like that. Explain that a little bit. Learn and then ask your mentor. So I think um, one thing that I've noticed, um, not only about myself, but what I found with a lot of entrepreneurs Mm -hmm. is that the they're perfectionists. And this is this is mostly entrepreneurs that I went to college with people who are educated. Mm -hmm. Right. Is that they want to be perfectionists like Dave East. Well, different type of perfectionist like, <laughs> like little dicky like little dicky again, you went to college again all your cool different, friends different shout type of richmond spiders I right guess. first of all shout out to all of them by the way yeah. uh, university of richmond um but uh, again just to provide some perspective on it um i think if you if you ask yourself too many questions you don't get to see the 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 benefits of your creativity and I think a part of the the creative process that I love that people hate is that I'm not afraid to just do something and not be finished and show people. Mm. And um, I think that your ability to be able to do that and raise your level of confidence um, raises the level of quality that you end up putting out before you show people. Okay. That makes sense because you become more confident in your own ability just to put stuff down. And now you just want to know, hey, am I going in the right direction versus is this good or not? It was funny because on the way up here, um, uh, I was having this conversation with myself, which was really with these guys, but they weren't paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, and, and then Brandon chimed in at the end and I was like, oh, dang, so maybe they were paying attention. This is how this goes. We get accused of this <laughs> right. all the time. Right. Never listen uh, to me. <laughs> but it's 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 going along the same fact Cheers. that um you know we're we're all consultants we're all experts yeah. and there's always going to be somebody who knows more than you there's mm-hmm. always going to be a client who is as intelligent and logical as you and they just caught that one part right that maybe you weren't thinking about that one day and so I think the uh, the ability for you to be able to balance the need to want to be the best person you possibly can be and then also being comfortable with where you are but not comfortable but confident mm-hmm. and that is is also a big part of why that coin I think is super 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 important. All right, cool. Well, I like I like everything that you are saying. Um right now we're at the speed round. So I'll read off the question and then whatever comes to mind. And you can guys can like go one at a time mm-hmm. or however you want to do it. You yeah. guys have been doing great. What gets you out of bed? Passion. Family. Family. Favorite band, artist, or group? Nipsey Hustle. Nipsey Hustle. The marathon continues. Okay. That's uh, respect. Yeah, Nipsey is definitely on repeat right now. All right. Favorite drink? Tea. Black coffee. Honey lemon water. I like that variety. <laughs> when you said black coffee, I thought I thought uh, no sugar, no cream. No sugar, no cream. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up, people are like, you really drink that, Tiny? Like, it's good. I literally go to coffee black. <laughs> Role models. So many. Jesus. Wow. Jesus Christ. Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I definitely think that image is real. Right. All right. Know. Luxury item. Cars. Lambos. Cars. Cars. <laughs> Lamborghini. Cars. Right. Cars. Cars. Favorite food? Chitterlinks. 
anything. Negative. <laughs> negative. <laughs> what? Negative. Chitter, chitter, <laughs> chitter, it, like chitter. It, bring, it brings back my grandma. Grandma used to make chitterlings all the time when we had uh, um, Christmas or, or Thanksgiving. But I don't eat them anymore. That's some that, special that's shit. A, that's, a piece of world, <laughs> that's a piece of world culture. That's I still need to, you know. <laughs> it's just pig intestines. Wow. <laughs> wow. Chitterlings. All right. Chitterlings. Chitterlings. Uh, chitterlings. I would say anything my mom makes, she's a um, fantastic uh, cook. Um, she also has a food blog. It's called Mapula's Table. Oh, yes. Okay. And um, she shows viewers, one, how to um, – uh, she has recipes. She also has stories about how to create experiences, events at home. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it comes from, one, uh, I want to say 12 years of world travel and um, catering to diplomatic functions. And um, people um, – or I guess I would say um, – Countries, um, countries, highest government elite, mm-hmm. um, and so she gives uh, some some funny stories, but also some uh, some tidbits on how to make experiences unique. Nice. My pula is my definitely my pula's table. Yeah. Yeah. All you know is you go to James's house. There's gonna be some good food. Too. And, yes, right. Nice. And I eat most of my food out of boxes. So yeah. anything other than so, <laughs> food out of a box is amazing to me. I thought I had a relationship with Chick Fil A for a while, but she kept closing on Sundays. So. Yeah, <laughs> no dope on Sundays. Nope. Favorite favorite country to visit? I don't think I've been there yet. Yeah, we need I to love go. here so much. And it just, yeah. like, it's, so, it's so many states that I haven't visited that have things that have affected and shaped how I see the world. And though I've seen other parts of the world, and great, it's good to see other parts where I've seen parts of the world I never thought I would ever see, like Babylon and things like this. Mm-hmm. But to say I haven't been to Mount Rushmore, right? Mm-hmm. You know, it's like mm-hmm. Yellowstone National right. Park. Alaska, you know, right, like these right, are right. these are real places. Uh, Oregon, I want to go to Portland. Yeah. Go, so, right. yeah. Uh, favorite place for me, I would say, um, is what well, was Villanculus. It's a string of islands um, uh, off the coast of Africa. Mm-hmm. Well, really, Mozambique, but. Yeah, he sent it to you in a text. Ty, <laughs> you never right. listened. I did. To I did send says. it to you in a Thanks. text. I time. told you. <laughs> <laughs> I got blockers on. Um, <laughs> Man, I just like I like the Caribbean. I love the Caribbean. The Caribbean. Yeah. All right. Best way to give back. Pro bono work. <laughs> um, man, this is coming out of hard time. Places. So just period. Time. Just yeah, time. Setting a good example. Just you know, I'd rather see a sermon than to hear one any day, right? Yeah. So just just laying that pathway. Somebody's influenced by you and watching you. Um, Make sure you understand you have that kind of influence and leverage it. Um, I think that golden rule comes in into play. Treat others as you want to be treated. Like, don't you hate to go to a mechanic and his car is jacked up, you know, and he's like, oh, your car is going to be great. No, I need you to find a time to take care of your stuff. <laughs> I need to take care of my stuff, and then we're cool. So I want somebody to show me how well they take care of themselves and their stuff so I get a confidence in how well they can take care of me, and I feel the same. Right. I try to show people excellence and so that they know when they're around me or working with the team that that's what they get to, uh, regardless if it's in some highlight color shoes or not. You know what's funny about that is before I lock my hair, like I I like to go to the hairstylist that her hair was not perfect, right? <laughs> really? Yeah, it's a weird thing. Like if her hair was not not perfectly kept when I went into the salon, I knew that she was like a hard worker. She had a lot mm. of clients, and she was like putting all of her focus into her 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 um her clients, right? Right. right? right. But then I found some stylists where they could do both, mm-hmm. and it showed me that they had better time management. Yeah, priorities. Yes, right. yes, yes. If someone's so, rushing on your car, and yeah. they leave that one screw Gasket out that actually <laughs> came with the pack because they needed to get it done faster. Yeah. Those are things that we realized in business were scenarios that minorities did not understand. What it's like to come in the door right. and actually try to be perfect for you. Mm-hmm. Retirement place. Gangsters do get chubby and move to Miami. Right. Yeah. Still, they still get chubby and move to Miami, I think. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Oh, I'm going home. Mm. The world. <laughs> TBD. Retirement. The, TBD. The world. TBD. I'm going to have TBD. a place in three different countries. That, I've, I've, yeah, that's really Basically, what I'm that's Mars. Right. All right. All right, Elon. Cartoon. Killing it. Bugs Bunny. Mm-hmm. Gotta love bugs. 
I really mm-hmm. like the Rugrats. So I'm just gonna get my <laughs> yeah. or Tom and Jerry. The Rugrats was just like me being Benjamin Buttons because they were just solving some complex problems. And, you yeah, know, at a young age. Yeah. yeah. Um. I don't know. Uh, Boondocks. Okay. You you would drama. And you can interpret that how you feel. All day, Drummer. please keep that away from me. Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. Please keep the drama away drama. from me. Too many. I've got too, too many. Much. Yeah. Too many. Too much drama. I love yeah. Game of Thrones. Um, I like drama. I like <laughs> I like drama. Uh, what else? Um, uh, I watched you Lost. Watched TV? Yeah. Uh, that was when I was in college. This is when uh, I had time. Oh, I was right. I was like, he watches TV. I was really shocked. Say, yeah, right. right. Um, yeah, but those, I think those, those are the two dramas that I think. Those were also series, too. So. Comedy. Mm. Dave Chappelle. <laughs> that was pretty classy. Uh, you know, I have In Living Color. I, I yeah. think Keenan and Ivory Wayans did yeah, that's his a whole family. Yeah. Is, he put everybody on. Man, he put everybody on. So I, I grew up uh, overseas, so we used to get tapes that were sent, um, I guess, from... Uh, they had maybe uh, sponsorships or connections with uh, Warner Brothers, so they used to send these kites or packs overseas so that people who were working in embassies could watch movies that were actually current. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I grew up on Rush Hour and, and, and uh, those sort of comedies. Yeah. Okay. And so that was Jackie Chan. And, <laughs> right. I yeah, like standards, though. Stand up classics, Eddie, you know, Richard, Pryor. Richard, yeah. You ready for the last question? No, it's 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 thoughtful. What is happiness? Wow, I mean, that's easy. Most people make this hard. Happiness is what measure of success you define for yourself and actually achieving it. I mean, you know, to give a, a overall to make happiness a complex thing is. Is the most ridiculous, you know, concept of all to me, and I had to come out of my own way to to pull that to pull that in. Okay, Todd or James. Um, if I want to be accurate, I don't think I would say anything different than what Brandon said. Right. Okay. But um, if I want to be original, um, I would say happiness is what you make it. I think happiness is the sum of your perception of all of your actions during this life. I'm going to go real technical. I'm an engineer. So I'm just going to say happiness is a hormone, right? It's, it's, it's the release of the hormones of, of pleasure, enjoyment, um, and whatever you're doing in life to help you get those consistently, right? Mm-hmm. So I'll say it's a chemical, chemical reaction. Hmm. Wow. Three, three really different, answers. <laughs> <laughs> really different answers. And this is this is what most yeah. of our clients get. It's good though. It's very, very Dopamine, good. Dopamine, endorphins, because it, it touches on your personalities um, and a lot of the the areas in which you guys have studied. Right, like you're a nuclear engineer. Mechanical. What type of, I'm a mechanical, mechanical engineer. Okay. Mechanical. Yeah, he just manages nuclear weapons. Okay, okay there it is. Come on, come on. Yeah. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean it's like, bang, right? It's like, how many people do you get to sit with in a room or on a podcast and say they manage nuclear weapons, research, development, technology? Yeah. yeah. Not not often. So, and then how many yeah. of those people are black? How many of those people None. are under exactly. 35? How many of exactly. those people have a $400 million portfolio at, at their nine to five that he, you know, does nine to nine to nine most days and still finds ways to do other stuff. And he has the worst hair in the business. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, and a beard. I have hair. I have hair, though. I and a family. That. So and when it comes family. down to acknowledging, you know, the, the nuclear background, that's the energy. And I think why he said chemical, yeah. you know, might be some of the answers where you get retired. That's about. what I was thinking yeah. when he said chemical. I was like, okay, right. see but where this is coming from. That's good. You- is there anything you would like the listeners to know? And it can be anything about the business, about you personally. Is there anything you want the listeners to know? Um, hmm. Document, man. Document your life. Document like, I everything. think so much. We talk about social currency, social capital, the mm-hmm. currency of life. Uh, I had a good friend. His name was Zayas Barnett. Mm. Uh, and he got slain by the, the police in Atlanta. A terrible event. Mm. Uh, and one of the cool things about him is being able to say that he was in 2011 so far ahead doing podcasts, doing YouTube videos, mm-hmm. posting links, getting the 5,000 hits needed for the next show, and getting that idea out, getting that 
uh, into the world. Like James said, don't be afraid to show something that's half done. Don't be afraid to leave a mark in this world that's mm-hmm. not what you think it is because of the, as Ty would say, the chemical butterfly effect. We mm-hmm. don't know what has influence in our lives. Like you asked us a series of couple of questions that made us trigger different references. Mm-hmm. What smell I, I felt or how I felt today triggers a different chemical relation, which ha- cannabis helps clear for a lot of people. They think it's foggy. But uh, yeah. no, you should do your research as far as what a neuroprotectant is, because that's what is, is classified as the government mm-hmm. as a neuroprotectant. But in saying that, clearing that thought process, clearing your balance, being peaceful, and then finding complex ways to answer simple questions is not how life goes. Mm-hmm. It's finding simple ways to answer complex questions. Mm-hmm. And your brain does that by relating chemical signals to the immediate effect and sphere of influence that actually matters. So if you saw this on social media, a small blurb 10 years ago, or we saw this in a cartoon, DuckTales, it doesn't matter. Our brain triggers a chemical like we're still there. Yeah. And so that level of, of awareness about putting out your work into the world, getting things that people can see out there, writing the papers, taking the videos, taking the time, making it professional as possible, and then putting it out there as part of our lives. And I think it's our duty as digital age existers to kind of leave a real presence. I like Speed. That. <laughs> uh, if I was going to give any advice, I would say two things. I would say um, every listener should aggressively find out who they are and become super comfortable with that and figure out who is as passionate about being who you are. The second thing I would tell the listeners to do is probably continue listening to this show because social capital how you are organizing your digital networks, how you're developing a relationship with your digital audience will literally be the next version of the stock exchange. Mm -hmm. Meaning people will be able, not be valued, but people will be able to leverage their value based on the strength of their endorsements and recommendations and also the access to direct contact with those audiences. Everybody. Yes. Everybody. (laughs) <laughs> All right. No, no, um for me uh I feel like I had a uh, uh interesting path to where I am mm-hmm. and the way that I got there was through leveraging technology. Mm-hmm. So always be open to be an early adopter of new things and apply that to your your um mission and your flow. Um I think, you know, things like Trello and 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 just Calendly automating things yeah. really help people to monday.com monday that. whatever it is right it, it, if you get to the point where you can't optimize your day and and set aside those times to be able to reflect or meditate or be with family and you're always on top of things it's mm-hmm. really difficult to you know really enjoy life while you're while you're working and, and trying to be an entrepreneur got it but thank you all for being on the show. Uh, tell the people how they could connect and follow you. James? Okay, so you can definitely connect with us socially um, uh, on IG, um, at I am Ontravation. Um, that is E-N-T-R-E, capital V-A-T-I-O-N. Ontravation. Innovation. Smack together. together. Um, you can also find us online at... Entrevation. Sorry, go ahead. I stole your thunder. Go ahead, brother. You stole the thunder. Entrevation.com. E-N-T-R-E capital V-A-T-I-O-N.com. All right, cool. Thank you. Thank you to our sponsor for season two, Punto Space. The contemporary raw space combines capacity with intimacy. Four distinct spaces on three levels encompass more than 3,500 square feet. Custom configurations, a state-of-the-art audio-visual system, and full-service support provide endless possibilities for realizing your creative vision. Thank you for joining the conversation. To learn more about Currency Shift, go to currencyshiftnow.com. If you feel as though you fit the criteria as the first, the only, or the disruptive, send us an email, info at currencyshiftnow.com. Until next time, keep pushing, stay motivated.